So guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to review the Motorola 2023 Razer. Now this is the Cricut version. Originally I was gonna get it under Metro, but I did actually switch providers because you know what? Uh, my wife desperately wanted this phone and Cricut had the best deal at the time for $199. Unfortunately, that sale is over and the phone is back to $599 regular price if you're switching or doing a new line under Cricut. Now you can still actually buy it for $99 under Metro by T-Mobile, but for you guys out there that are just buying phones strictly unlocked as is, you are looking at a $599 or $499 price tag depending on which sell, like Best Buy or which place you get it from. Now, this is the cheapest flip phone that you'll find on the market for obvious reasons as I explain it. Um, you do have the little vegan letter, vegan letter, vegan leather on the outside of the phone itself. And I can't say how many flips this is good for, but so far it's been working pretty well. We had it for, you say about a close to a month now, roughly? Yeah. Okay, so she had hers for close to a month, but for review purposes, this is actually my Razer flip phone that we're reviewing. And the recording that you see right here is actually full HD 60 frames with a Razer 2023 in low light settings. And I love doing videos with the actual devices so you guys can get an idea of how good it actually is. This does have 4K, but only in 30 frames. So that's why we're doing full HD. So with that being said, let's get right into this video and talk some tech specs and is this worth actually purchasing in 2024? So let's first talk about the outside screen that you see right here. Now a little specs on this is actually a 194 by 368 external display. Uh, it does have 282 PPI according to the specifications, but it is outside screen, so I don't think anybody's too worried about that. And it is as bright as 1000 nits. Now like I said before, uh, this is actually a screen where if you tap it, it's a little outside screen does different things, but I'll show you some of the specs. Now, if you go into the settings in a Motorola device, you have the option to change what your outside screen can do and what pops up. So for me, if I, well, let me press it for you, swipe up, obviously these are notifications right here. And depending on the type of notifications, you can actually click into the YouTube, you can click into these applications itself and read responses, text messages, things like that if you want to. If I swipe to the right or to the left, either way, it, it does the same thing to make, take you back to the main screen. These are some of the applications that I have set up. So one is the weather. If you swipe over, I have audio recorder sync. So I'm actually able to record voice memos from outside the phone. So for you guys out there where your boss is yelling at you, just tap your screen, press record, and then boom, you got evidence against them. Now <laughs> for anyone else, uh, we also have a music player. Well, I have a contact list that you can do. Now you can't use your full contact list here. You can put favorites and then tap it and then it'll actually call the person from the outside screen. It'll automatically be on speakerphone if you're not using a Bluetooth since the phone is in fact closed. Uh, right here, uh, this is normally the music player, but I'm actually watching a YouTube video and it shows the last video behind it and you normally see the, the, the what is this called? Fast forward or skip video and then play in the middle. Now, with that being said, it is possible to play music and touch the outside screen to change the songs, but Motorola has a signature which allows you to go to the settings and hold volume up or volume down to change the song, especially if you have your own music or music player. So that's a pretty cool feature right there. Oh, oh yeah, totally forgot about this. About to go to the next section. If you swipe down, you have your Wi-Fi, you have your brightness, you have your Bluetooth settings, basically the settings that you would normally see like airplane mode or different things. If you was just to open a phone up as is right here and then swipe down and see these things up top. So it is pretty cool uh, for the most part, obviously, for someone that's used to the more expensive Samsung devices or more expensive Motorola devices or flip in general, you're going to have a bigger screen on the outside. But this is technically the entry level version. And I am glad that they dropped the price of $499 because the original $699, I, I could never suggest a phone like this, especially when the other ones are nearly a thousand and you get better features. But with that being said, let's hop on to the next section. Now, for you people wondering about the unlock options, we're going to talk about the screen in a moment. You do have the option with face unlock. It just can't recognize face at the moment because I actually have a camera in front of my face. So it's not going to unlock. And you do also have the uh, fingerprint scanner on the right hand side. Your volume rockers and the fingerprint is on the right hand side. Didn't show you this guys earlier. Uh, your speaker, sorry, not speaker. Your uh, charger port is on the bottom, typical Android. And there is no headphone jack whatsoever. 
Oh, did I mention this has vegan leather? Well, it does, it has vegan leather. And it does come in different colors, of course, but that depends on the carrier or who you buy it from unlocked. So I'm gonna just hit this button to unlock the phone and we're gonna talk about some specs. So this screen is 144 Hertz. And just to verify that real fast for people that are wondering, when you go to display, we do have the option to change that back to 60 Hertz, which is standard. Now, if you change it to 60 Hertz, the phone is going to suffer and a lot of applications to your eyes adjust to it. It's meant to be on 144 Hertz. I'm not sure if it fluctuates between 140 to 120 or anything like that, but it is what it is, right? And technically, theoretically, the standard version would save your battery a lot more, but you didn't buy a phone this expensive in order for it to run like a basic generic iPhone. Uh, well, no, iPhones are probably 120 hertz since the 15, even the basic ones I think now are 90 hertz. But uh, the most regular standard Androids are either 90 hertz or 60 hertz, which is really below the belt. But anywho, uh, the maximum brightness should be 15, I'm sorry, 15, 1400 nits. Now, if we go into a website, uh, it says the phone can go up to 240 hertz to 360 in game mode only. I don't know how that equates necessarily to a 144 hertz screen. I'm not avid in gaming, but I will show you how that is. Now, the main display is full HD plus. You're getting uh, 2640 by 1080 in the resolution for the screen. 413 PPI. Don't forget, this is a 6.9 inch screen, so it's a little bit bigger than the typical Android phone. That being because it is a flip device. Now, most of the time you are gonna have this phone closed for the most part, but for me, uh, because I constantly open up my device all the time, I would say that I probably open my phone up about uh, about 60 to 100 times a day, roughly. I think that's pretty much the average. Well, 100 would be above average, 60 would be pretty normal, and for the average person out there that doesn't own pets, you might just decide to keep your phone open. And if you do decide to do that, just so you know, when you ever get a notification, it'll just light up like a regular typical phone as if this outside display doesn't even exist. So, so far, just with smoothness and things like that, I have no issues whatsoever with this device. It works very, very well with smoothness. I did have the occasional slowdown. That has nothing to do with the screen. That's the processor. It's a seventh gen processor or something. We're gonna talk about that in a little bit. But with that being said, so far, so good. Um, anyone that is worried about the smoothness of the actual device, you don't have to worry about that. The touch works very well with the gaming and things like that. I haven't had any dead zones yet. Like uh, occasionally the screen did freeze on certain applications and I had to close it out and then just go back into it and it worked. I don't know if that's a Motorola issue or application issue, but outside of that, minimal issues whatsoever with the actual screen itself. So for my nerds out there that wanna know a little bit about processor, oh, this is an application that pops up. They actually have a camera app set up on the phone. And so I might receive hundreds of notifications alone when I'm at work. It's ridiculous how many people pass back and forth outside. But the point is, is that it actually, the battery holds up pretty well, which we'll talk about the battery in a moment. But for right now, let's talk about the processor. So this actually ships with Android 13. And from very limited research, it seems like you're gonna get about three years worth of software updates in addition to actual software uh, upgrades, meaning the Android upgrades. So I believe this will die. Technically Android 16, you won't receive anymore. The other Samsung flips, I believe, receive up to five years of software updates. Apple receives up to five years or six. It really depends on how popular the phone at the time people are buying it or the sales at the time. So that might turn some people off to Motorola. But at the end of the day, hey, listen, I'm a person where I buy a phone like practically every so many months. And, you know, so I will never keep a phone for three years to be, even begin with. But for you guys out there, that's the limit for upgrades. Now, the processor is a Snapdragon 7th Gen 1 mobile platform for you guys wondering what that is that is a high-end processor but i want to say it's about three years old or so and the reason i say that is because if you know anything about the samsung s23 fa 5g that one has the eighth gen processor snapdragon and that's two years old so I would, this is a one generation older than that one and again uh price tag originally you're really paying for the flip aspect of the device because normally something like this would not cost seven hundred dollar eight hundred dollars online it would be definitely would be cheaper um, you're getting eight gigabytes of RAM and for the full specification of that LPDDR4X RAM. Now, will that matter to the average user that is buying this? Absolutely not. If you're doing things like going up and down, using Google Chrome, uh, using Samsung wearables, watching videos on Prime Video, keep in mind, um, I am under the Cricut Networks on Wi-Fi, so it might take a little longer for applications to run, but everything runs pretty smoothly for the most part with the, oh, Ghost in the Shell, I need to watch it again. 
Uh, everything. Oh, this is the worst movie in the world. Dragon Ball, the magic begin. What is that? What is this? Oh, this looks terrible. I got to watch this. This looks so bad. I got to watch it. But anyway, um, the processor, for the most part, works really, really good. Now, let me tell you the issues that I did have with the processor. And this is coming from a guy that does video editing from his phone. So if we go over here uh, to Ucut. As a matter of fact, it's funny. I keep doing it. I have everything set up on certain pages. If I go over here to Ucut, right? And I go to my edits. I actually do tech videos, as you see. This is actually the last video that I posted on channel. It's called a Belkin video. Now, once you press save, you have the option to have it high quality, low quality, 1080p, 4K. Now, obviously, you pick 4K if it's under 4K. I keep mine in 1080p. Uh, 24 frames, the frame rate. It, you can actually convert the video at the frame rate of what you were recording. And I use 60. Once I press yes on this, it's going to go from 0 to 100% and it's going to start converting. Now, I actually, while it's converting in the background, because Androids allow processes to happen in the background, uh, iPhones do not. iPhones require you to stay on that application so that when you go through the process of using that app, um, it won't overload the phone with multiple applications. Like I can have a phone call, play Call of Duty, and still be able to do things in the background while on an Android device and not joking simultaneously be on YouTube it, certain phones allow you to do certain things on Android devices and it's one of the reasons why the processors are always the, the amount of RAM and the share processing power has to be high because you could do substantially more you have more freedom to be able to customize iPhones don't do that nothing wrong with an iPhone but understand that you just you're heavily restricted in your usage so that's why iPhones move so smoothly because they practically terminate any application in the background now, I did try to take camera photos while converting, and the phone did get warm. I'm not going to lie about that. And at one point, it actually let me know that it was crashing because it was lagging so much that I wasn't able to take photos and video while the processor was editing videos in the background. So for you guys out there that use Ucut or Photoshop or certain applications on your phone, you, you're going to experience slowdowns if you do any type of video editing and do other stuff in the background now what i will say is i did watch a youtube video while editing and i didn't have any problem with slowdowns at all just minimal hiccups here and there switching between applications it did work pretty well for the most part so with that being said again i know that this is a niche crowd that needs to know this information but it is still good to know the average user you're not going to even experience what it is that i'm talking about you'll have pretty much a smooth transition for the most part outside of the occasional hiccup where you unlock the phone with the fingerprint or the face unlock and sometimes the software doesn't quite catch up and it seems a little laggy where the applications uh, uh icons right here don't necessarily pop up you just have to lock your phone back and then hit the lock button again and it should fix the problem immediately after that now with that being said i mean nothing else to really say about the processor i will show you how some games run and things like that so you can see in real time but outside of that it is technically still a high-end phone but at this price point and how many years the processor is in terms of age, I would consider it more of a mid-tier. This is what mid-tier technically should be. Oh, uh, also, this does have wireless charging. We'll talk about that in a second. So there's one aspect that I know that some people are going to complain about when it comes to foldable devices. Let me explain what that is. Personally, I like the fact that if you flip this open and try to press down on it with one finger immediately, it won't go down right away. When you add some force, you have no issue. Now... The few people that I've spoken to that have this phone and the uh, reviews that I have watched on this device say that they feel a little disappointed because they can't have to put pressure on a hinge. I personally think that that's a good thing. That would technically mean that the hinge won't get as loose as it as most phones. But his wife, as you keep flipping this hinge back and forth, it's going to get looser over time. There is absolutely nothing you can do about that. These type of phones last a year, two years, three years at most, depending on minimal usage to regular usage to high-end usage. Obviously, you want it to last as long as it can. And depending on which carrier you're with, I'm with Cricut, it actually said that I have a warranty on if the top of the flip breaks, I can take it and get it switched out. And then, you know, I don't know how their warranty actually works, but I will have to go through Cricut with my particular warranty. So when I press this button, I'm mean, not press the button, when I press the flip, I like the, the fact that I have to add pressure in order to do that, which I normally use two hands to close it anyway, just to make sure that it closes and, and opens evenly and I'm not putting too much pressure on it. On the flip side, when you flip it open, let me try that right here with the one hand, 
it is a little difficult to do so. It's easier to just use your hand and flip it up and down. Um, we did talk about this. I think I might have touched on this point a little bit earlier. This is the vegan leather right here. It feels very nice. I like the way it feels. Now, I know some people won't be a fan of this hideous gray texture, but this phone does come in different colors if you actually get it online. Or uh, I'm not sure. Let me think. Metro by t does sell a purple version. I don't know if they physically have them in stores, like certain stores will have them. You'll have to call and check yourself, obviously. But nine times out of 10, they're gonna more likely have the gray version because it's more of a universal color where men and women could use. And you can just throw in a case that you like on it and you never have to see that gray again. So, you know, again, not really a big gripe when it comes to the hinge. I like things that are sturdy. So far, I haven't had any issues. Of course, I haven't dropped this either and I refuse to do a drop test, but it's been working very well so far. And it surprises me because it's a Motorola product and I normally don't buy them. Water and splash resistance, you may be wondering. Well, I'll make this very quick and very simple. We're actually going to combine parts. I'm going to do the, uh, the talk to you about the battery life and the actual um, splash resistance rating because they kind of have to go hand in hand with each other in a sense because that's the battery life and the physical welfare of the phone. This has splash resistance and like a water resistance rating. So it means if you're in the rain and you happen to use your phone, you should be okay. If you are near the pool, you better keep this thing in the locker because it's not going to be able to go underwater at all. It does not have those protections. And again, for $699 on the Motorola website, this should have a better IP rating. Just being honest here, it should have at least IP. I don't, I can't even give you a rating, which one I think it should have. It should be better than what it is for that price tag. Now, again, I don't take my phone out of my pocket. I do travel through a scooter every day to work got a new one recently and i keep this in my pocket and it has been raining it has been pouring and i haven't had any issues whatsoever As a matter of fact the phone didn't even get damp or wet at all i always protect my investment just because it can have a splash resistance doesn't mean that you should let it happen now we need to talk about the battery life now i, I want to kind of give you before you shy away from the phone just hear me out first it has a 4200 mah uh, battery obviously not removable so if anything happens you're not gonna send this out to Motorola to get it replaced. Nine times out of 10, you're probably just gonna get a new phone or use the insurance to switch it out. And you shouldn't have any issues immediately unless you have a defective model. Luckily, mine was not defective, so I'm good to go in that regard. Uh, it has a 30 watt turbo power charger. Now, it doesn't come inside the box with that. I know, stupid, right? These cheap companies love doing things underhanded their customers. That's something I don't like. Apple started that nonsense craze and every other flunky company followed after. But luckily OnePlus doesn't do this because they have their charges are substantially more powerful than pretty much most devices on the market that are mainstream. Mainstream, I say guys, mainstream. So you, you, this does support up to 30 watt turbo charging, which I do have 30 watt chargers. I also have 20 watt Belkin chargers. They work. As a matter of fact, the 20 watt Belkin charger, um, that right there does do turbo charging with this particular device in case you're wondering. My 32 or 35 watt chargers do the same thing. I even have a OnePlus 65 watt charger for the OnePlus 7T. I've kept the charger all these years. That one also does turbo charging in this. My N30 5G 50 watt charger does uh, uh, turbo charging on this. So most of the chargers that I have do turbo charging. Now, if you wanna go buy something from five below, I don't suggest you do that. Like USB-C to USB-C is the way to go for the most part. Chargers are extremely cheap and you can buy, hell, you can buy Samsung chargers online if you want to. Uh, you can find them probably like two of them, two 25 watt chargers on Amazon. Those also work. I've tried all these chargers personally. They're good to go. Now, the five watt charging is for wireless charging for this. Now, I have tried wireless chargers that do 20 watt charging. Some do five, some do 10 watt. It takes a very long time for this to charge on five watts. It's not ideal. It is ideal if you're uh, going to bed at night and you want to charge your device. But I do notice that every time I close it, put it on top of the wireless charger, a couple hours walk past, walk past, a couple hours go past, I wake up, um, the phone is warm in the back. As a matter of fact, the phone is warmer with the wireless charging, which is odd to me, than it is with the actual 30 watt plug charging. As a matter of fact, if you charge it, you'll feel a little heat when it's plugged up. But the moment that it's 100%, it's like all the energy just dissipates and it's just holding the charge and it feels like it would outside the box, like it's just a solid phone with no heat issues whatsoever. So you shouldn't have any issues with battery life. Um, it doesn't die super fast or anything like that unless you're using the camera. 
If I'm playing Call of Duty or any type of video game or watching movies and things like that, I get many, many, many hours of sc on screen time. Unfortunately, I can't tell you my exact screen time because, again, I'm not the average user. I'm watching Netflix in a smaller screen on the phone while doing uh, edits in the background or or uh, uh, playing a game or something like that or, or web browsing, reading manga. So my usage is substantially heavier than the average person because I'm doing not only just video editing, but also gaming or just regular web browsing while watching videos. It's one of the reasons why I love Android devices so much. And, you know, it's, it's been working very, very well. I like it. It charges actually, surprisingly, it charges very fast too, probably because it's a 4200 mAh battery, but it withholds its battery very well, even though it charges fast. I can confidently say that if I, this charges faster than practically, in my opinion, just my opinion. I don't have factual evidence of this. But when I had an A54 or 5G or uh, other Samsung devices that are 25 watt charging, because they stopped the 45 watt charging, now everything is 25 watt. This to me seems like it charged much faster. But again, those phones have 5,000 millihertz batteries. This one has 42, so that is to be expected. But it still holds up pretty well to even the heavyweights in my opinion. Now, you know, with that being said, again, if you're not a person that's looking big into batteries and you're just looking at a device strictly for everyday usage and you just happen to like the flip aspect like my wife, she really wanted it because it was a flip, nothing else. So far, she's been happy with it. And I think that you as a person will also like the uh, performance of the device. So the gaming experience on this phone, I like to think is pretty good. And I'm gonna, this is called Final Fantasy War of the Visions. Now for you guys out there that know anything about Final Fantasy Tactics, I'm sure you waited 100 years for Square Enix or Square Soft, whatever they call themselves these days, to finally make a second edition. They're never going to do that, you know. Forget the fans. But anyway, this is a Android application that actually plays very, very well in my opinion. Um, I've been playing this for, I forget how long. I just come to it and pick it up whenever I feel like it is a Final Fantasy game. Now, just so you know, there is a setting that allows you to autoplay. I'm doing that right now and as we speak, so you guys can just look at the graphics and how well it works. Let me pull that up closer. So you can see the experience. And I slowed it down. So as you can see here, um, the gameplay for this is actually very, very smooth. Obviously, you can control your characters yourself. What this game does is it allows, uh, for people that are wondering, different generations of Final Fantasy players, Final Fantasy games, they do war, uh, near Autonoma, just so many different uh, collaborations and things like that with this particular gaming device. Uh, trust me, I, this, this is not a sponsored video. This is just something that I play on my spare time from time to time when I want to see what happens with the story. And I'll be honest, half the time I just let them do all the moves themselves and I just upgrade and keep going. The game basically plays itself in this case. Yeah, you can speed this up, but for video purposes, I just wanted to show you how the graphics are. So with that seventh gen processor, it actually works very, very well for the gamer, whether you're playing Call of Duty, Mobile, whether you're playing Genshin Impact, it's going to work great because the processor is in fact high end. The RAM works very well, the screen resolution, it doesn't, affect the 144 hertz screen. If anything, it complements it and everything just runs very, very smoothly. Uh, what I will say is that the phone is getting a little warm in the camera area right here in this area. It's actually getting hot, not hot, hot, but warm. But I haven't experienced anything where I needed to put the phone down personally and um, stop the actual gameplay. And keep in mind, I have the case off on this phone. The average person is gonna have some type of case on their phone. I took it off for video purposes and I'm not having any issues. Now, if this was a Pixel phone, like one of the 6As or the 7s or something like that, your phone would have probably been a flaming fireball by now, but Motorola does do a good job, especially with a phone that's actually this thin. This is a razor thin phone, <laughs> it's called the razor. And it's just really small and, and I don't have anything really bad to say about this experience. Everything works just fine. So, you know, with that being said, no need to show you any more gameplay. The game works great. Um, you shouldn't have any issues, especially if you're buying this for a younger person that's big into a lot of video games. If you're buying this for yourself and you want to play Diablo and Mortal and games like that, again, you're not going to have a bad experience. And granted, it's not the fastest fast charging in the world, but it's pretty good, especially for a Motorola device. I normally shy away from Motorola devices because of their lack of features, but this one right here is actually one of my favorites. So I'm slowly becoming a fan, but yes. Gaming is going to work just great for you guys out there. All right, guys. So this right here is the camera on 60 frames outside. Now, remember, I told you that I was recording on my wife's device. But this one right here 
this house is going to look in better daytime lighting as you see it looks really really good now i do notice that the camera suffers from more nighttime viewing or dimmer light it's kind of to be expected it is a motorola device they don't exactly have the best cameras in the game but again for the average person that just living their life wants to record personal events birthday parties graduations and things like this this is going to work very very fine for you you shouldn't have any issues whatsoever and this recording right here as you can see it's stuttering um i don't know why they even allow 4k on this camera if it's going to stutter this much this is 4k 30 frames they do not have a 60 frame option unfortunately um i personally use 60 frames because it seems to be much sharper in my opinion especially with the frame rate well that goes without saying the frame rate is definitely sharper with 60 frames but even though the 4k had the better picture the average person wants the smoothness of the video to run a lot better especially if you use your phone for personal recording so you know with that being said it is what it is in case you guys are wondering this is 69th street had to do some shopping so i figured you know what park the car let's go ahead and just do a quick recording for you guys so you can see it in real time so this is the part that everyone wants to see is this phone actually worth the asking price the 699 price tag normally i'm going to say a big no on that one for 699 i would never buy this phone but it was reduced to 499 500 and yes it is worth 500 dollars. let me explain why now I don't know if you guys are familiar with cell phones in general, but the Samsung A54 5G is a six gig RAM device. It is a Samsung phone that's sold pretty popular, I might say so in the market, but it has 120 hertz display. I would say the cameras on that definitely rival this one, if not better. Um, that phone is $469 or so like that, close to $500 normally. It's, internal memory wise, 128 gigs also processor wise it's belts below this one this is a motorola device you have the high-end screen you have the 144 hertz display you have 30 watt fast charging you have wireless charging for the people out there that use that because a lot of people do you have all the features that are necessary you even have the outside screen which has limited functionality but it's not that serious right for 500 bucks i do think that this is worth it if you're going to metro by t-mobile the phone is 99 dollars as a port I think 199 is a new line if you're uh, switching over and you want a new number, but 99 as a port and then you pay your first month bill. So for under $200, you can have a high-end device. Yeah, the processor is a little old, but at the end of the day, do you honestly care? Now, when I speak about processors and things like that, it's only a market of certain people that care about having the highest-end processor. The average person is okay with cameras like the Motorola. You've seen it. It's not the best cameras out there. Obviously, it's not that most highest-end. Far from it. But it still works very, very well, very, very well in certain scenarios and certain settings. For the $500 price tag, yes, this is worth it. If you can find it even cheaper for porting or online, it is worth the asking price. I, I can confidently say that there is no flip device if you're into that flip gimmick right here where it goes up and down. If you care about that, this is going to be the cheapest thing that you're going to find on the market. Nothing else is cheaper. And I'm not talking about used devices that your friends and family gave you. I'm referring to brand new in the box as you, the first owner. Whether it's a porting deal or it's a brand new price deal, this is going to be the cheapest. It does work well. I haven't had any terrible performance issues. I haven't had to power the phone, power cycle it on and off in case something froze. I just didn't have those issues so far. And it's been working very, very well. I know I'm repeating myself like a hundred times. The general consensus is yes, it is worth the money if you're paying 500 brand new or for a porting price for cheaper, depending on your carrier. It is not worth 699 regular price because you'll be able to go to, you know, buy a Samsung flip for $200 more that's going to have a better flip hinge, a better uh, camera, realistically, and you'll have a bigger outside screen where you'll be able to view things from the outside screen. Like, you got to kind of just put it in a particular, uh, 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 what's the word look for, Crystal? Um, it's in a particular category. Put it this way. I consider this a mid-tier phone and to, by today's, uh, what's the word? What's the word? Help me out here, guys. I'm talking to myself right now. This To me, this is mid-tier in terms of specifications. Because of the processor being so old, practically three years old, that's why I say it's mid-tier regular mid-tier phones have eight gigs of ram that well one plus n30 5g has eight gigs of ram so it's like 
the mid tier market is reaching this point. That's what it should be. While the high tier market is basically the Samsung foldables, the Samsung uh, Ultras, the, the, the OnePlus 12s and all that stuff out there that's coming out. Those are high end. Those are the phones for the specialty people that want certain requirements and, and they want specialty devices. But for us average users, you just want something that works. You want something that when you turn it on, it won't lag all the time. It won't freeze all the time. When you go to text messages, it won't constantly lag and freeze and require you to just start tapping random keys when you're going. I know, trust me, I know the the, the broke phone uh, problems that we experience. That's why I try to suggest ones that are actually good where you won't have that issue. And this is actually one of those devices where you should not have any of those slowdowns unless you yourself get viruses on your phone and that does happen with android devices if you click on any uh, a website you're going to get a virus eventually and don't blame the manufacturer blame your usage but at the end of the day hopefully you enjoyed this view you got what you need out of it like and subscribe like always and i will see y'all in the next video